Hello, everybody. We are going to wait just a moment for everybody to get signed in and connected to the audio. We're just going to wait just a few minutes before we get started. I want to just welcome everybody to the Science and Technology Committee, or not the Science and Technology. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. It is the Health and Human Services Committee today. Um, today, we have Megan Kosove. She is the Director of Communications and is an experienced communications and public relations professional with a demonstrated history of working in the public sector and serving the people of the state of Florida. And we also have Wanda, Wanda, can you say your last name for me? Figueroa. Figueroa. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Wanda is the Director of Family Engagement at the Early Learning Coalition in Palm Beach County, who oversees the child care resources and referral, um, early intervention and family and community engagement programs. Wanda holds a bachelor's and a master's degree in social work from the University of Puerto Rico and has over 15 years of experience in meeting families' needs. Um, I do want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded, so if you could stay muted. I do want to welcome everybody to turn on their webcams if they're comfortable. We would love to see your faces. I do see some beautiful portraits, so that works as well, but we do want to see your faces if at all possible. Um, and with that being said, I will hand it over to you, Megan. Sounds good. Thank you, Kirby. Welcome, everyone. Um, I am really excited to be here with you today. I do want to make sure that you see our presentation. Yes, I do. Tell you just a little bit about myself. Uh, again, my name is Megan Kasov. I'm the director of communications at the Early Learning Coalition. Uh, early learning is near and dear to my heart. I've worked in this industry for the last 10 years. I'm also a mom to three young children. So I live, breathe, and, and work in early learning. So I am immersed in it 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So I really enjoy it. Previously, I worked in politics with a, a policy and a legislative background within the Florida Senate and enjoyed my time there. It's kind of where I got started in, in the public sector. And um, needless to say, I'm pretty passionate about what I do. If you know, kids aren't, they don't come with manuals. Um, parents are learning all about early learning as they, as, as they have children and as they begin to, to grow. So, you know, what the Early Learning Coalition does is a mix between providing wonderful programs and services, but also parent tools to help families become their very best parent, uh, their child's first and best teacher. I wanna take a quick moment and introduce Wanda Figueroa. She is the Director of Family Engagement, and I guarantee you she's going to ignite a love and appreciation for early learning um, with you today, and then we'll get started in our presentation. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Kirby, for inviting us today. This is really an honor and a privilege to be here. I'm very happy. I'm very excited to share what we love. And the work that we do is something that is very close, a uh, thing like Megan, to my heart, because I am actually an example how these services can help a mom um, and the children to success. I just um, oversee the child care resource system referral. And just to give you a very personal you know, note about this, this program is really be a parent. It is something definitely difficult when you try to choose in a child childcare location. And definitely all these programs help me and help my child that born with the special needs to now be as successful in school and life. So uh, we will share with you all the services, all the programs that we have, so you can love as well what we love, you know, from the Early Learning Coalition. Thank you. Thanks, Wanda. So let's get started. We, again, we work for the Early Learning Coalition of Palm Beach County. I like to call us the most amazing nonprofit that you may never heard of. Um, you're going to hear about what we do, but the important takeaway that I'm hoping that you'll you'll remember and you won't forget us is why every business, every CEO, every manager, every employee, every resident of Palm Beach County should be an early learning champion. Oops, sorry, went a little fast there. Priority at the Early Learning Coalition is making sure that every child in Palm Beach County is ready to succeed in school and life. We oversee a wide range of different programs and services to ensure that children have access to high quality early childhood education experiences. 
in their formative preschool years. Early learning is the key to help all children become ready for kindergarten and to enter school with that foundation that they need to grow, develop, and become the wonderful human beings that our society needs. What's interesting is our work simultaneously helps break the cycle of generational poverty. It allows families to work, it allows families to go to school and positively impact our society. So needless to say, we're a little passionate about our purpose and our mission and what we do. But I wanna take a quick minute and just pause. When I say the term early learning, does everyone know what I mean by that? Um, if you don't mind, throw up a little emoji on your screen if, if, you're, if we're on target and you know what I'm talking about when I'm saying early learning. Just to do a little, uh, a little repeat, early learning is, it, and we use these terms interchangeably, early learning, early childhood education. They're basically the description for the education that children receive inside or outside the home um, from the ages of zero to five before a child reaches kindergarten. As you know, babies are born learning. Very young um, children can learn through play and um, active exploration. And most importantly, they are learning these important social emotional skills that, that lead to executive function that stay with a child and stay with an adult the rest of their lives. It is a time when children learn um, to form these important partnerships with parents and adults and caring teachers. And when this is done successfully, it lays the groundwork for all future learning. So let's talk about what are the benefits for early learning. There's many different benefits from early learning. Um, you can see here on the screen that early learning contributes not only to the cognitive side of the child's development, but also to the social and emotional. And you'll hear us talk about that because the research has been showing that that really is the missing key. You know, kindergarten teachers can, they have the skills to teach um, all the important curriculum that needs to happen in kindergarten. But if a child can't sit or listen to instructions or follow multi-step instructions or share or wait their turn and, um, and have the ability to trust other t parents and teachers other than just your, your home unit, um, those would be important skills that, that you learn in early learning before a child gets to kindergarten. Well, let me just kind of, you know, sum it all up for you. Simply put, why we're really passionate about early learning is that these early years lay the foundation for all that is to come. Scientists have realized that the brain develops the vast majority of its neurons, the ones, the only brain um, neurons that a human being will ever have. All of that brain development happens, it's 90% by the age of five years old. So. By the time a child reaches kindergarten, if they haven't been learning and making all of those wonderful strides, we have missed the mark. And that's why we're so, so passionate about it. During this time, babies, um, their brains gain more than a million neural connections every second. This crucial period of brain formation will affect how a person learns and communicates and behaves for the rest of their life. It is made up, their human brain is made up of neurons that are specialized cells that send messages to the rest of the body. It's important to explain that, you know, every new experience and every memory that a child has during these critical um, formative years creates these synapses and these connections that basically unlock the brain's power. However, when children are exposed to adverse childhood experiences, which could be like trauma at home or trauma at school, it can have devastating effects on a child's development and a child's behavior. But here's why early learning is so important. Although we call them ACEs, adverse childhood experiences increase a child's risk for certain health conditions and, and behaviors throughout their life, it does not guarantee them. When a child attends an early learning program and has support, they can manage, they can manage these experiences, they can learn from it, and they can continue to lead meaningful lives. So this is another reason why having access to high quality early learning experience is just so important. I think I can take 
just a quick minute with you and just show a little bit more about this national conversation that we are having regarding early learning. And so you can just see a little bit more from a larger, larger zoomed out version of why this is so important. Babies in the beginnings of humanity grew up in these very rich extended families. So in that kind of context, caring for children, teaching them, just getting the work done that you need, they all take place at the same time. And of course the world that we live in now is a very, very different world from that. We have a society in which moms and dads both have to work to even support a family at all. The central problem is that the ability to provide that nurturing attention early in life is less than ever before. Good job. Minimum wage just isn't cutting paying bills. We couldn't afford to put him in preschool. Donnie's with him all day and I'm with him all night. This notion of the American dream, that is fundamentally not happening. Because of the fact that, you know, it took us that much to get her here, that putting her life in someone else's hands means so much. One years old, he can't say anything, he doesn't sit up, he doesn't walk. When those markers are set in childhood, they impact the way our bodies work for the rest of our lives. These are our children, our families in this country. Ignoring this and just going on as if it's going to correct itself, that's a disaster for us as a society. This is not the way it's supposed to be. We have a deeper understanding now of how important these early years are and why. We're unlocking the secrets of the brain. First time in history. We never had a way to look into a baby's brain before. What's going on up there is rocket science. <laughs> Babies' early experiences create the foundation for all that follows. Yes. I want to be their Miss Honey. I want to be the one that's like, you can do anything. They are doing the work that will really fundamentally make a difference for the outcomes of these young children. We need leaders in every community to step up and say, every child should have access to high quality early education. If we get this right, our country will look dramatically different. Oh. Whatever we want to call it, child care, preschool, home, we have to do it everywhere. So there are some things that. Sorry, one second. So that, that short little video right there is from a larger documentary called No Small Matter. And it's, um, it's being played in communities just like ours throughout the, throughout the nation. And there really is a call for, for our national um, presence to, to take on early learning and to take on childcare. So, um, you know, I wanted to take a second just to show that this is not something that is unique just to, um, just to Florida. This is a national conversation about why it's so important. So let's kind of talk about what's at stake. Why should every business care about early learning? Florida is now the third most populous state and by 2030, 26 million Floridians will call Florida home and 1.5 million jobs will more jobs will be needed. Those numbers might even be more after the pandemic. I have heard that close to uh, 300,000 people have maybe moved to Florida in the last year alone. So we may have to update those numbers. But to prepare for this growth and to ensure that Florida remains successful, the Florida Chamber has released something called a Blueprint 2030. And it's a blueprint for Florida's future. 
in this blueprint, uh, with the collaboration with the Ch Florida's Children's Movement, the Florida Chamber is, is taking a stake and they are focusing on early learning. And here's why. When a child is ready for kindergarten on day one, which means that they know their letters, they know their numbers, they are ready to learn the kindergarten material on day one, typically they will be proficient readers by third grade. And if they're proficient readers by third grade, most likely they will graduate from high school and more children will have the opportunity to go to college, university, graduate school, vocational school, or start the next Fortune 500 company. So we're making the business case. Currently right now, uh, there's 58% of, kinder, of kindergartners are ready, for, are ready for kindergarten. And that number has to improve. And how do you improve that number? You invest early. There is a economist who is, is pretty well, well known in the early learning world. His name is Dr. Heckman. And he's done a lot of research and he's been in this field for the last 20 years. And he does research on the rates of um, in the rates of return on human and capital investment and the different ages that the investments are made, the return that the society should see. Some experts tout the return on investment is calculated at an annual inflation adjusted rate of 16% or more for high quality pre-kindergarten programs. It's, it, that number is even magnified when they are targeted for disadvantaged three or four year olds. So think about that. If you invest early, you'll have, you'll, in the end, you'll spend less on prisons, less on welfare, less on social programs on the back end. So invest on the front end and invest in human capital. It's been proven through, again, uh, Dr. Heckman's research that children who receive quality early learning childhood experiences in their first formative years are 50% less likely to need special education, remedial programs. They're 70% less likely to be arrested for a violent crime. And they're 50% less likely to become teen parents. So the big takeaway here, invest early. So all of that's wonderful, but you still might be wondering, what does the Early Learning Coalition do? Um, in the state of Florida, there is the Department of Education. There is something called the Office of Early Learning. And the Office of Early Learning governs the day-to-day -day operations of large statewide programs such as VPK and school readiness, but the early learning coalitions are responsible for actually delivering the services. In 1999, the early learning coalition was founded and we submitted our first school readiness plan in 2000. So we've been at this for quite a while. In 2005, the um, Florida voters went ahead and, and through a constitutional amendment voted to have universal, but we call it voluntary pre-kindergarten for all four-year-olds and that's now called our VPK program. And so we are also charged with that. But the coalition does so much more than all of those things. And so I brought um, my really good friend and my colleague Wanda Figueroa who's gonna tell you a little bit more about what the coalition does and the programs and services Thank you, Megan. I would love to share what other programs and what other services we have, what we do. So the first one is the school readiness. And um, even before children attend pre-kindergarten, they came from experiences that help them be ready for school. That is why the school readiness is such important and is a very important part of the early learning. The Florida legislature recognized that when they passed the School Readiness Act to help children from low-income families get the support they need to be successful in school. While helping children prepare for school, the program provides childcare so a parent can work or attend in school or go enroll in any educational program. The school readiness program covers the whole or partial cost of childcare, preschool, or aftercare. The beauty of this program is that we cover from children zero to 12 years old. So we can help the family and the children at the same time. Just to give you some numbers, there are approximately 1.3 million children younger than the age of six in Florida. 
about 11% of children under the age of six in Florida are in school readiness programs. Just to give you a fact, in 2019 to 2020, 221,711 children received school readiness services from 6,932 providers. This program really support the families to jump in the workforce, to meet their goals, but most likely support that child to be ready, to be successful in the school, especially in those first five years, which is so important for the brain development, get all the resources, get all the skills that is needed, get all the information that is needed, and we continue helping until the child is, is 12 years old. Currently, through COVID, the state has eased or reduced the requirements to help more families and receive these benefits. These waivers are in place until the end of June. So we want that more families and more families take advantage of this program. So if you know, and I need to do this because I need to do this, if you know any family or any person, if you have employees who may need assistance, this is a wonderful program that serves in two purposes. Cares and educate the children, which is huge. But when we do that, we also support self-sufficient parents. And now I need to share one of my favorite programs, which is the Voluntary Pre-Kindergarten or BPK. So I want to follow Megan, take a moment, and share an emoji if you have heard about the BPK before. Let's see. And Wanda, I see Renee has a hand raised. Do you want to take a quick question? Absolutely. I will do. Uh, thank you, Wanda. Uh, my question is, how early uh, can they start? And do they have to be a Palm Beach resident or, or just a Florida resident? That's a good question. For thank you. For, thank you, Renee. For the school readiness program, yes, it needs to be a Palm Beach resident program. One of the requirements, they need to live in Palm Beach. And if the child have from even a day, you know, of born, so even the child have one day, two days from zero to 12, if the family have children between zero to 12, they can apply. How early? Now. Now is the time that they can apply. We have a waiting list process, but the good news is that right now, we pull in from the waiting list and we really enrolling kids more and more. So this is the time, Mr. Rene, this is the time that they can apply because some waivers have been put in place and, and it's important to get those children in care. Thank you so, thank you so much for answering the question. My pleasure, thank you. Did I see the emojis? Let me see the emojis. Did you hear about BPK before? Let me see. Well, if it's not, oh, I see that, yes. I see that you guys hear about VPK. Well, VPK, a voluntary pre-kindergarten, gives children a jump start for school by preparing them from kindergarten and enhancing their pre-reading, pre-math, language, and social skills. I love that because it's an educational program and it's unique, it's actually unique design to prepare children that have four years old to get ready for kindergarten. One of the best part of the VPK, and I need to say that, is free. So it's for all children that have four years old. And the good thing and the difference for the other program, school readiness, is that in the VPK program, you just need to live in Florida, be a resident of Florida, and have a child that have four years old. One of the things that I want to share and point out today is that enrollment in Florida in the VPK program is down at this moment. And this is really a concern for all of us. We know that the VPK is a good program to prepare the children for be ready for kindergarten, but we are concerned about the long term that this will definitely impact if we have the students not enrolling in this program. So maybe we're facing children studying kindergarten that they are not ready for that, for that, for that, for the school. So 
it is it is a magical year and developmentally it's pivotal year for children in VPK. VPK they learn math skills and I want to point this one more time they learn math skills, pre literacy, early writing skills, and important social emotional skills. That together will set them off a path for a success goal. We know, and we know as the parents, our caregivers, keep their children home is, and especially during the COVID, we have families that keeping their children at home this year, especially for the pandemic. But the unintended consequences of that is that children entering kindergarten in August. So this is the reality. Well, a lot of children are going to start kindergarten in August, and maybe they have not had the experience of VPK. Maybe they don't have the skills that it needed to be ready for kindergarten. And we want to share this news and this program to everybody because it's not too late. We still have opportunities for those children that has not participated in the VPK program to take advantages during this summer. Yes, we definitely want children to enroll, enroll in the program. And our main goal is that the children be ready when they start in kindergarten. As a mom, it can be scary, you know, that the children start in kindergarten with no experience about the routine or with no experience about the skills uh, that they needed. So it's not too late. If you know any family that have a child that had a four year old Florida resident, please send, share that information. Um, now, I definitely want to talk about my heart. This is child care resources and referral. I, I think you guys hear that in every single program that I share, right? School readiness, <laughs> VPK, and CCNR, child care resources and referral. I love this program because this is the front door of any early learning program in Palm Beach County. So if a family, they don't know where to go, if the family, need to know information about, okay, I, I, I needed information about child care, I need assistance, they can contact us and our specialists that are completely bilingual, they speak Spanish and Haitian and Creole as well, they can provide the information that they needed. For example, four main services that we provide through the Child Care Resources Referral. If they need resources, we connect them with other, you know, programs and organizations. So when they call us, maybe they call us for childcare, or maybe they call us for assistance for childcare. Guess what? We take that opportunity to serve the entire family. We provide information about financial options, but at the same time, we're asking them, what do you need? What are the challenges that you face as the family? What other resources are you seeking? at this time. So we connect them with other programs. Palm Beach County, I think we have a blast because we have a lot of programs in the county that we are able to connect. So we, we really are in a county that we have a variety of programs that we can connect. So we help the families and support the families in that area. One of the main things that we do with the families in child resources and referral, we educate them to take or to, to make an informed decision about the child care needs. Selecting child care is one of the most difficult decisions. I, I don't know, but me, when I have my baby four weeks and I need to go back to work without no family support here, all my family live in Puerto Rico. I was the only one that decided to move out of the, of the country. So here, I didn't have any family support. It was very important for me that someone provide me information about how I can choose a quality location, what to look, what to observe, and what is quality, you know, how I can determine which provider, um, child care facility provide quality services or not. So we educate the family because we want that they take an informed decision. And we want definitely here to support them in any other aspect, even if they need it and to find, you know, any job, we're looking for any programs. If they have challenges because the child have some um, special needs, we are here to connect them as well. So we as a child care resources and referral agency connect the family with other programs. Child care developmental screening. I think that in the video, Megan shared a little bit about that. Screening the child, it's very important. 
screen the child is key. Learn the signs at early is key for success of that child in, in the school. Not all the child development at the same time, and it's okay. You know, every child is different. But as parents, you need to observe and you need to know what are the milestones, what are the aspects or the, the skills that the child needs to have in specific ages. And for example, by eight months old, a baby should be able to respond to touch, smile, and others or respond to facial expression. For the two years old, your toddler should be able to walk, to go downstairs, push, and pull large objects. In my case, and I always take this very personal, I have a child. I have two kids. I didn't say that, but I have two kids, 13 years old and a six years old. But my firstborn, in the beginning, one year old, he didn't say any word. And at one and a half, he say mama, when I was clapping and I was, yes, mommy, yes. And then he say daddy and apa, which in Spanish is agua, water. Um, at two years old, only four words was able to speak my child. My concern, my mentality in that moment be, and you know, social working and everything, I was thinking, oh, two different languages, Spanish, English, maybe is that, guess what? We went to professionals and they was able to screen my child. And they was able to say, you know what? Your child needs to improve in this, in this area. Today, my child, read perfectly, speak a lot. Oh my goodness, you know, he really faced all those challenges. So screening the child, it is important. And as an early learning coalition, that's the first thing that we do. When we have a child that even participated participate in the program or not, we screen him more than once a year. We actually provide that tool completely free to the families that they can able to check if the child is in track or not. So this is key to make sure that the child definitely is successful in the school. And we try to do this before the child starting in the school. So from the child, from the ages from zero to five years old. The earlier we can identify children who may need a little extra care and attention to develop these skills, the sooner they will get the help they need to thrive. This is done by ELC, Early Learning Coalition. So I'm very happy to really say that that's something that we believe and we partner with amazing programs to ensure that child have, if the child need any further assessment, get into assistance right away. Not only just to give me the number, do a warm hand up, calling the agency with the parent and ensure that the services are connected. Next, parents are their child for teacher. That's an statement, that's what we believe. We don't do this for the families, we do this with the families. So we strongly believe that any program that we develop, we part from the sentence and from the statement, from the belief that the parents are the expert. No one knows the child better than the expert. So we meet with them. We build different programs to engage the family in their education, and they provide us topics. They let us know exactly what they want to hear, and we create different programs. We create parent worship, parent um, chats, and parents cafe well we have different programs to ensure that the family is um, engaged in the early um, education of the child and the early learning coalition in Palm Beach County definitely support those programs we offer support education engagement opportunities but one of the main things that we do is that we recognize that parents have the child for teacher and they are the best advocates of their children so part of our family engagement programs is ensure that parents are, they make sure that they are the educators and they are the first advocates, advocated of the child. And I wanna see if you can take a moment to go to our social media. And when you, you know, take a moment, go to our social media, put early learning coalition, you will see all the parent chats, all the parent workshops, short videos, educational videos, just to provide the information to the parent. And next um, is the early learning and child care providers. We cannot do this in our own. We have partnership with child care providers here in the county. And why do we call early learning programs and we don't call them child care and not daycare, actually not daycare anymore? The term daycare does not honor the work that is being done, definitely. And brings up an image of kids being managed or hurt 
through the day. Daycare work, that work, assume a low skill profession where people simply keep kids alive. We know do we we know too much about the first thousand years of the child life and brain development. And I need to say that early learning and childcare providers are really educated, added skills, are interactive, are flexible. They always looking for opportunities to grow. And as a coalition, we provide um, for them a free platform to get in trainings, to get in technical assistance is needed. Even if they have a child that have a special needs, we have an inclusion manager that is able to go to their locations and observe you know, the child and work with the parent, with the director, with the teacher to ensure that child get the services that is needed and the teacher get the services that is needed as well. So they nurture children, they, they help with the curiosity of the children, they help with the domains of the, of, of the child development. It, we do more, we definitely do more and that word daycare do not honor what we do. Okay. I just wanna share the last, my last, screen and my last slide just to share the variety of services that we have or type of chocolate that we have in account and this is important because sometimes families or, or, or residents sometimes think that it's only one type of chocolate that we have in Palm Beach and it's not we have chocolate facilities that are licensed we have faith-based centers well, or licensed exam centers we have family chocolate home small private home, we have a large family chocolate home, we have goal seal accreditation, so it's it's more opportunities, it's more options for the family, depending on what they need it. Sometimes families call us and they're looking more for a private environment and they're looking more for a family chocolate home, others looking for a group setting for the chocolate center. So it's really important to share with our community that we are here to really provide in all the options and just provided the information they needed. So by the time that they need to take, to take any decision, they take an informed decision. So now is your turn, Megan. <laughs> Thanks, Wanda. Um, and we're wrapping up. I, I know we're, we're, we're close to the end of our time here, but I just, it, I'd be remiss if I didn't share just a little bit about our, our COVID story and the pandemic. Um, and, you know, each and every one of your industries was also affected. And I was just going to share just a minute about how we were affected and how uh, families and child care providers in Palm Beach County were affected. If, um, if you don't have the opportunity to see it um, in your daily lives, please trust us. Our families in Palm Beach County are really struggling during this pandemic. Um, they lost, many lost jobs, many lost family members. It's been a really, really tough time um, for families, but also for our child care providers. Uh, most of the child care industry in Palm Beach County is they're small businesses. And so, you know, back last March, 55% uh, of our child care providers had to close. And when we came out of that 15 days to slow the spread, remember that? <laughs> that was over a year ago. They began to reopen and our child care providers were finally deemed as essential. Our, I'm not sure if you were aware, but our doctors, our nurses, our EMTs, they couldn't go to work to serve our COVID patients if they didn't have childcare in place. And so childcare is one of the first industries that opened back up, but they needed help. At, as you remember, you couldn't buy toilet paper, you couldn't get PPE supplies, you couldn't buy sanitation or disinfectant. So our, our team as a coalition, we stepped up and we began to help our early learning providers and, um, and our families in many substantial ways. We provided food, we provided formula, we leveraged every partnership with many organizations in the county that we had. And I have to say a special thanks to the Children's Services Council of Columbus County. If, Kirby, if you haven't had them do a presentation, you need to. They are absolutely wonderful. And again, they, if you don't know exactly what they do, they help every organization in, in Palm Beach County do what they do. But we were able to provide a child care scholarship for our first responders. If they were serving on the front lines, the last thing they needed to do was worry about child care for their, for their children. And so we helped them pay for it and we helped them go to work every day. 
Um, since then, since thanks to the CARES Act and to several other um, appropriation bills, the, the state and federal government have been helping early learning. Um, as you can imagine, children haven't been going to preschools as much. And so for these small businesses, they were similarly shut down just like restaurants were. Um, and so the state and the federal government is coming to help them. Uh, we were excited. We were able to partner with Serena Williams. Um, she supplied some face masks to preschools. And we also partnered with No Kid Hungry to supply formula and food for babies and toddlers. And we didn't stop our mission um, of serving our families and children for not one single day during the pandemic. And, and we're super proud of that. So let me just wrap all of this up. We could, we, we're so passionate about what we do. We could talk about this for, for, for more time, but I know you have to get on with your day. In conclusion, what I really love for you to take away is that our children deserve nothing less. And to paraphrase Dr. Seuss, Unless someone like you and I cares an awful a lot, nothing's gonna get better, nothing it's not. And our children deserve nothing less. So if you know of families, if you have employees, if you yourself will become an early learning champion and help us share our message, we would be really grateful. And I guarantee you, our youngest learners, our youngest citizens will be better because of it. So thanks for having us, Kirby. We really enjoyed being here today and we'd be happy to take any questions. Well, thank you so much for, for such a wonderful and inspiring presentation. Your passion definitely comes through the screen with what you guys do. It even made me a little emotional. Um, I did have a little panic attack in your video when the phone started ringing. I started looking around for, for somebody's phone going off with the green around their screen and I was like, okay, it's just the video, but I did have a little panic attack. <laughs> but again, this, this was such a great, great presentation. So thank you both so much. Um, we do have some questions in the chat box. I do wanna welcome people to turn on their microphones if they would like to be a little more interactive. So if you're comfortable, please turn on your microphone. I did see Renee, you put a question in the chat. Um, and then Wanda, I see you responded. So Renee, did you see that she responded to your question? It's um, yes. where do you where do you sign online for this program, or if you can call? And she did put their website in the chat. So if if you guys are interested in that, please take a look. Um, I'll, I'll already front you guys on Facebook and LinkedIn. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just a quick question. What's the income limit, yeah, limitation for a parent to enroll uh, the kids? Do we have to have a certain income bracket to qualify for this? Yes, uh, actually for the BPK, it's free, it's no income guidelines. Any family just kind of definitely can apply if they have a child that is four years old and live in Florida, that's, that's for sure. For the other program, school readiness, we have income guidelines, so to but we have income guidelines for 150% of the federal poverty level to get in the program. However, we have an amazing partnership with the Children's Services Council. Um, we encourage every family to actually apply to the program and see if they qualify. This is not for the school readiness, if they qualify for any other local funding, which is going a little bit more over the 150. Okay. And the PBK, there's no income limitation, is, is for anyone under four or five or under 12? Four. The four. child PBK, the child needs to have four. Is the program, actually the program just try to prepare the child to be ready for kindergarten. So the child needs to be have four. Sometimes children have five before they start to kindergarten. That's okay. It's just um, have the age um, four to five to before starting to school. Mm -hmm. Nice. Great job, guys. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I do see that the, the, all these questions are being answered in the chat. Um, one of the questions is the organization and nonprofit 501c3. Um, Wanda did, or Megan said, yes, it is a nonprofit. And I do want to mention that they have been nominated for our Nonprofit of the Year Award. Um, so those results will be coming up on at our business awards on Thursday, May 27th from 7.45 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. at the convention center. 
So if you haven't bought a ticket to that, I definitely suggest that you, you come and check that out and you will get to meet these lovely ladies as well as a bunch of other companies that have been nominated. Um, it's gonna be a great, great event. Um, do we have any other questions before we go into the self-introductions? Yeah, I have one question. Is it that all children are inclusive? Uh, do you have special pro programs for kids that are on the autism spectrum or attention deficit or something like that? Yes, all the programs definitely are inclusive. Um, the good thing of the early learning programs that we have in, in the Palm Beach, we actually have an inclusion person to serve them. They take all their training so uh, that they can work in with, those with the children that have any special needs and we connect them with any other organization that, like Child Find or Easter Seals, Home Safe as an entry agency to ensure they continue with the program and services. But I will say absolutely, yes, inclusive. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, do you have a uh, special ed pre-K? Do you have special ed pre-K? Alan, we, we do, there is, it's called a VPK um, SIS program and it is, they, they do, we do have providers that provide basically the VPK education, but in a program that is accessible for any type of um, learning or cognitive or physical disability. So there is a big movement from the state to make sure that all of the programs that we offer are inclusive of all learners. Okay, just was wondering. Yeah, if you need information on that, Alan, I'd be happy to shoot you an email afterwards. I'm always glad to look. I used to teach pre-K in New York City. So pre-K special ed, actually. So, well, you know. thank you. Great, hey, great. Okay, any other questions before we, before we move on to the self-introductions? All right, so with that, I'm gonna start with James. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company? My name is James Collins. I'm an insurance agent for 16 years, going on 17 years, health, life, and Medicare. Collins mm -hmm. Insurance. I have a website, so everything is on my website. Thank you. All right, well, thanks for joining us today, James. Sue. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. It was really, really interesting such an important program that we need, several programs and things that you're providing. My name is Sue from Sue Jones Promotions and I do promotional products and custom apparel. Thanks Sue, and Sue is also an ambassador here with the Chamber. Sue, have you, how long have you been an ambassador? Um, I think over 11 years now. I'm probably one of the oldest, <laughs> not oldest, <laughs> not but oldest. oldest running ambassadors. <laughs> Well, and, and we could not do our jobs without Sue, so she is a huge help to us here at the Chamber. So thank you, Sue, for everything that you do for us. You're most welcome. Thank you, Kirby. <laughs> Renee. Oh, Renee, you are muted. I am so sorry. A great job. <laughs> Again, everyone, like uh, Sue just said, it's a wonderful presentation. I have a nine-month-old uh, little girl um, name is Sophie, so... She's adorable. She's almost walking now. She every time she got the chance to stand, she's like running. So I had to keep an eye on her all the time. She's in a pre-K um, school already, so she's she's fast learning. And as long as you put this program, I, I jump right in it. Um, yeah, if anything I could do to help and uh, grow your organization, I'll, I'll be more than delighted to to be part of it. Um, I work for uh, for it was. Our organization has been around for a long time, 175 years, New York Life, but I'm a financial advisor, uh, representative. So I do two seminars on Wednesday. So I would like to invite you to jump in. One is about college funding, pre-K funding. So you start saving for and, and, and funding. Actually, uh, uh, you could fund uh, up to 10,000 on pre-K. So we do that every Wednesday at 10 in the morning. And the other one is 11 in the morning about uh, uh, financial retirement and life, generate lifetime income. So if anybody wants, the, the earlier you start for retirement income and you want to generate lifetime income, we have some great strategies to present you in 30 minutes, very short, full of information. Just uh, look at uh, Rene A. Fonseca at, uh, in Facebook or, in, or LinkedIn or, and, and my name will come up. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Renee. And pretty soon you're not going to be able to keep up with your daughter. So, <laughs> so enjoy that while, while, yes. she's, while she's still. 
<laughs> like fast, 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 fast. All right, Alan. Um, my name's Alan Gerwitz. Um, I taught for a while, as I said, in the New York City schools, but I went back to school and I now run a medical and marine training center. I train everyone from doctors to everyday people how to save life and do their job safely, um, including we even run babysitting classes and CPR AD classes and first aid and stuff. Um, we um, are Coast Guard, US Navy approved uh, military Sea Lift Command um, and New York City Department of Education approved. We're in New York and in Florida. And um, it, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I hope you guys come to class and learn something. Have, thank you. Thanks, Alan. Thank you for joining. Lisa. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, ladies, for a great presentation. I work at Opportunity Early Childhood Education and Family Center, and I live what, you talk, what you're talking about every single day. And I have only been with the organization since right before the pandemic, but actually reopening the school and coming back and being able to keep people working and giving that hand up instead of the hand out and being able to see children thrive and setting up learning pods and social distancing and all the PPE that we've had to use and the new guidelines that we had. It has just been such an experience and not all dark. There are a lot of really good bright spots getting to know the children so well, really seeing them thrive no matter what because they know that they're still loved and they still are getting the special services and everything that they need. They're getting two meals a day, they're getting a snack, uh, they're getting all the love and attention and the developmental needs that they have too. So uh, I am just delighted that we do work very closely with the ELC and uh, I'm so glad to be part of Opportunity. And when uh, post pandemic and we're getting there, I would love to give you a tour of the school. It's just amazing the work that we do here. Well, that sounds fantastic and it sounds sounds like we we have made several connections here on this call and if anything i think that is a huge success um thank you all for joining us today thank you so much megan and wanda and the early learning coalition for everything that you do we are so appreciative um please reach out if you have any questions i know after the fact everybody always kind of thinks of something that that they forgot to ask or meant to ask. So reach out to me and I would be happy to connect you to whoever you need. Um, I do wanna mention that our next meeting is on June 8th. It's a Tuesday from nine to 10 a.m. I hope to see you all there. Bye.